chewing time with Korean movies. Everyone has hometown, but some people lost their hometown and long for going back home. Today, I tell you the movie of the people who lost their hometown. The title of the movie is Road to Sampo. Sampo in this movie is an imaginary small island and it is hometown in heart to the people who lost their hometown. This film is based on the story of So Kyung Hwang, the famous writer in Korea. He tried to show the poverty-stricken lives and the sense of vagrancy and unfairness of reality that caused this tragedy. The director of this film is Man Hee Lee, who was genius but died too early. This movie is his last and posthumous work. It is considered as the most outstanding go-to movie in the history of Korean cinema. It is in harmony with the realism of So Kyung Hwang and the lyrical image of director Man Hee Lee, who suddenly passed away during film editing. Yongdal, a young laborer moving around the concert site with a middle-aged man, Mr. Jung, who is going home Sampo after tenure of prison life. They have breakfast at this small restaurant. The owner of the diner asked them to catch a bargain who fled from the restaurant. And if they catch her back to the diner, she promised to give them big money. When they found the Bekwa, a beauty and thick jock captured them. They soon get friendly instead of getting her back to the restaurant. They become companions and they have their journey together. The journey with Bekwa was joyous. The world covered with snow, and their journey is tough. The snow covered the field, and the snowstorm was harsh and chilly before they met Bekwa. But with Bekwa, even the snow covered the field can be a sweet place to enjoy with. They enjoy the white field hilariously, like innocent kids. Through the snowstorm and top ridge, they reach a village in twilight. The evening smoke rises from the chimneys of some houses, and some people are hurrying back home before dark. They are looking at distant view of the evening, as if they were longing for something. They found an abandoned house to rest that night. They talk about hometown resting around the fire. And young daughter suddenly flings away in anger and grief. Becca goes out to comfort him. But her constantly makes him more rageful, and his top response makes her angry. Yongdal shout and Bekwa screams. Ironically, circling fires of jubilory flicker peacefully from a far distance. Jubilory is a kind of Korean traditional firework. They circle white little flame cans or stick at night of the eve of the first full moon day in lunar month. While circling fire cans or sticks, they pray fortune of the year. 
Yongdal gazed vacantly at the flickering of the fire. Becca helped the restaurant as a bargain and brought in with the man to sell food and wine more. She is the queen of the party. But that party soon gets a scene of mess. Beating and biting each other. What a real scene. Jung pretends to be her father to protect Bekwa. Bekwa feels the fatherly affection from Jung, even though she has no memories of her father. Jung also feels the fatherhood of Bekwa because he also has a daughter in his hometown, Sampo. When Bekwa came back together, she really wanted to make Sampo her hometown. Sampo becomes her home in heart now. Yongdal and Bekwa become much closer, and Bekwa wants to live with him together. Yongdal also loves to live together, but he has no job in this cold winter. Bekwa says she can't support him this winter. Frustrated by the fact that he can't support his wife, and the feeling pride hurt, by being supported by a woman, he abandons her in a crowded market. Korean men always think that he has a responsibility to support his wife and children, and to be supported by wife is shameful. Jung blames Young Dal for abandoning penniless Bekwa in the crowded market. Jung advised that good couple looks like an innocent kid, bickering with each other sometimes. When someone stands before truthful heart, he also becomes sincere, thinking of suffering of Bekwa when she lived with him. He decided to send Bekwa to Seoul. Her world that he could have a baby makes him even sadder. Young Dai buys her ticket to Seoul, boiled egg, and bread. He gives her all the money he has. Before leaving the station, Becca tells him that her real name is Jamsun. Yongdal plans to go to Sampo with Jung to get a job. 20 to 30 years ago, in Korea, we used to drink, sing, and even dance on the bus. Of course, not now. The bus is bustling because it is loud and noisy. Some men are wrestlers. The winner will be given a glass of soju. Yongdal also has an arm wrestle with a promise to give him a job if he wins. He wins the game and get off the bus and join the team of Walker. Mr. Jung gives Yongdal all the items he has and advises him to save money and find the Bekwa and busy sample together someday. Now, the bus is very quiet with a few passengers. Talking to a passenger, Jung finds that two tourist hotel have been built in his hometown. And his hometown is no longer peaceful and quiet, as it is crowded with tourists. He is confused to learn that Sampo is no longer his old home. Outside the bus, cherry blossoms are blooming fully. The season is only the spring. Epilogue. 
Actually, according to Liv Kosov, she would take a job at a place not far from Sampo. Yongdal would save money to search for backpack. The background of this move is snow covered world. Snow is both a seal of hardship and a place for purification. Sometimes it is difficult with a snowstorm and sometimes it's a stage where you can play on as like a innocent children. Mr. Jung experience ahead of others and become a guide of others. Even though his hometown has changed, he has door to meet there. Even though life is tight, it doesn't mean all hopeless. For people complete their human lives by sharing bonds and consideration. Maybe soon, three of them will meet again, like a family. Anyway, the parade of blossom in the last scene of the movie is very beautiful.